uh, this afternoon, and I think, you know, there's no there's no uh, body running after me that I can tell, so I can rejoice in that God's taking care of it in advance. Yeah. Yeah. And I praise the Lord for that, but did you know when we've got a need, we want God to come on the scene yeah. real fast. Yes. And I want you to know, when we cry out to God, that's what He does. He comes on the scene real fast for us. Amen? And we won't let them to turn back that uh, have ill intent, that turn to our confusion. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people in the world, they just go about sin, amen, if they can just cause damage and destruction to somebody else. But thank God, God is a protector of all that call upon Him and cry upon Him. And let those that seek the early rejoice and be glad, amen, because God is a, a present help and continually He works in our behalf, amen. But we're born needy because we realize we don't deserve it. Amen. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Amen. 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 Aren't you glad for the love of the Lord? I looked at Brother Caleb when I said that a while ago. I'm not talking to Brother Caleb necessarily. I'm just saying, anyway, y'all can help me to be organized. It'll be appreciated. It'll be a blessing. Amen. 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 I want us to just continue to get in and love the Lord. Let God do something special in our hearts, in our lives tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to come to you tonight for the offering. Say we praise the Lord and appreciate your faithfulness in giving to God and obeying His Word and giving back what He's given to you. And He's a wonderful God, a God that keeps records. Amen? Amen. 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 The Father of Heaven, we thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings upon us. This offering tonight, uh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you use this money in a, in a mighty way for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
1973, uh, more babies have died in abortion in my lifetime than in all the wars in human history mm -hmm. in the last 6,000 years. Uh, that's a true statement. Amen. But, uh, but there is some good news uh, in the story about Moses. Uh, the midwives during that time, even though they were commanded by the Pharaoh to kill the Hebrew baby boys and toss them in the river, in the Nile River, there were a group of them that disobeyed the Pharaoh. And that is how, you know, that's ethnic cleansing, by the way, mm -hmm. all that stuff going on back then. And the midwives decided that they're going to allow the Hebrew baby boys to live. Amen. That is how Moses was born. His name in Hebrew means drawn out of the water. And the good news is, in Exodus chapter 1, verse 21, you may want to make a note of that, by the way, Exodus 1, 21, that God had built houses for those midwives. That is in the Bible. And just as God had built a home for them, he is building a home for you. Oh, yeah. So the last thing I want to say, uh, there are, I'm not going to, I'll just go through a couple, but there are seven feasts of Israel. And in the life of Moses, within the context of the Bible, uh, all seven of those feasts were actually played out in the life of Moses. But, uh, but I'll, I'll just name a couple here. And that is, uh, we know an expectation was happening when uh, Moses showed up when he was 80 years old. He was going to take the, the Jews out of Egypt to the Promised Land. You're well familiar with that story. Uh, that night was Passover. That was the 14th of Nisan. Of course, that's the first full moon of spring every year. The expectation is that there would be an exit. And the exit would be going to the Promised Land. Amen. But here we are, 3,500 years later. And, uh, you know, we had COVID-19 going on uh, three years ago here. And the Jews in Moses' day, uh, they were under lockdown. In other words, they had to stay in their homes. 3,500 years later, in March of 2020, all the Jews in Israel, for the second time in human history, they were all under lockdown. And by the way, you were under lockdown. Too. Right. People all over the world were under lockdown. Mm -hmm. But for us, there was an expectation. And the expectation was. So anyway, that happened. They, as you know, uh, the death angel came, and uh, uh, the firstborn of the animals and people that were the Lord had passed away. That was the judgment that God called for. And uh, nine of the ten plagues that God put on Egypt, one of them the Jews did not have to go through. And uh, or, or I should say that uh, if they didn't put the blood on the door, right. they would the firstborn would die. But you know, it was that's the 14th of Nisan. We all know that. Well, the very next day, the Pharaoh's son is dead on the 15th of Nisan. And 1,500 years later, we have Jesus who died on the cross, yeah. and the expectation was salvation. Oh, right? Wow. And the very next day, Jesus was in the tomb. And it was God the Father's son was in the tomb. Right. He paid a price for all of us. And then on the third day, we know Jesus arose on the third day, which is actually the feast of Hercules. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, when they got to the Red Sea, when the Jews got to the Red Sea, it was the third day after they left hmm. Egypt. And they were all going to die. They were going to be driven into the sea. And a miraculous thing happened. Of course, you, and you know the story. God had allowed them to live. They crossed the Red Sea. And uh, the parallel with that is what happened to Jesus Christ on the third day on the Feast of First Fruits. And by the way, that did happen on the Feast of First Fruits, that they crossed over uh, the Red Sea. And uh, last but not least, I, I told you I'd just cover a couple, is uh, the fourth uh, feast, uh, which he called Pentecost. You know, uh, what happened with Moses was he went up to the mountain. The Jews believed it was actually on the first feast of Pentecost, as you know it, that Moses went up, and of course he comes down and people are living in sin, 
but he had the law. Right. Okay. And, and, and in this situation, it was a marriage. That was actually God's betrothal to Israel. And when a Jew betroths a woman, of course, there has to be a contract. That contract's called a ketubah. But there was a written, it had to be a written contract, all the things the woman was going to get. And, of course, they got the word of God. Glory. That was the ketubah Glory. to Israel. And 1,500 years later, Jesus came for the wedding. And, of course, uh, that was denied then. That. But what happened to the Christians was that's the first day the church was born on Pentecost, right? And of course, there had to be a ketubah of God's betrothal to you. And that betrothal was given in a ketubah, which you call the Bible. And that's the written contract for you. So that's four of the seven. I just wanted to share that with you. But you can see all those things in God's Word, how it's all played out. And like I said, it's just as God had built a home uh, for the midwives, he's building a home for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's wonderful, isn't he? Amen. Amen. God thought of it all. Yes. Yes. No surprises. We're ready. All we've got to do is trust him. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 All right, at this time, uh, Brother Andrew and Sister Hannah's going to come and minister in song. And let's just continue to worship Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Brother Doug, why don't you come on up to the clock and get ready? I'm going to just get out of the way. And after they're through singing, I'm going to turn the service to Brother Doug. Amen. God bless you. Aren't you thankful and appreciative for what God's doing through this man and his family? Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Tell you what, they're just precious and we love them.
worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. They were singing that song this morning. I got my foot on the rock. Yes. And we're talking about the rock. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. The one here recently the pastor spoke to us about. He said, the rock upon whom we must fall and be broken. Amen. The scripture says if we refuse to do that, that rock is going to fall upon you and I. Right, Mr. Pastor. Oh, it'd be good tonight if we could take the advice of that song and just yes. fall. Yes. Amen. Upon yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. I'm so thankful. Yes. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord tonight. Appreciate yes. it. Again, the, the, all just the way that God is moving here and doing yes. what He's been doing. I appreciate all the encouragement going out on the street yesterday. We met a man named John. <clears throat> Atheist, raised an atheist, watched his mom get shot by his father, and uh, just a terrible story to hear. You know how people are sometimes, they, you know, they play to the situation to, for sympathy, but I sensed there was a sincerity in this man. Homeless, wasn't drunk, wasn't high on drugs, very articulate, amen, just uh, bitter, lost. And I'm done. Amen. Can't get them out of my mind. Right now there's a, a God in heaven. Amen. 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 That knows right where that man's at. That's right. Amen. If it wasn't for the grace of God, there you and I would be tonight. Amen. Amen. And here we are. Amen. Amen. Just a few short blocks away from a horrible situation. Oh, we can pray, church. Yes. We can lift up the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want you to think about John this week. Pray for them. Yes. I want you to think about those that we've ran into over the years in different places that we've talked to and, and ministered to and, oh, and that we've had encounters with. And let's begin to call out their names. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know what? God saw fit to use you and I. Yes. Brother Charlie didn't hurt my feelings one bit the other day when he said be a good donkey or whatever it was. Amen. Hey, God, so uh, 47, 57, 137, whatever, oh. round draft pick, you know, I don't care what you call me. Hey, man, I was unfit, I was unworthy, I was poor and miserable and blind and naked, and God delivered me and gave me life, and he wants to do the same for John. He wants to do the same for Sam. He wants to do the same for all those. I'll tell you what, we need to get a burden. I said, we need to get a burden. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ was moved with compassion. Yes. Yes. All too often, we're moved with indignation. Right. We're moved with wrath, or we're moved with whatever. Amen. But if we get a hold of the heart and the mind of Jesus yes. Christ, you're not. Yes. Amen. Lord. We start having compassion yes. on some people. Oh, Amen. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, when we get to thinking about what he did for us, Amen. boy, you ought to get thankful. Amen. Amen. You might not have been a drug addict. You might not have been a scoundrel, a thief, or a liar. But you was lost. Yes, sir. And you needed a savior. And if you ever came to a place where you got saved, you realized that I was undone. That I was lost. And I was on my way to hell. And if nothing else, he saved me from hell and myself. And he gave me life. Amen. Glory to God. He's a good God. Yes. Amen. So thankful today. I don't have what I got, what I deserve. Oh, yeah. Thank you, so thankful today for the Word of God. I tell you what, I am just excited. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter ten. I don't always preach the most encouraging messages, but I tell you, the Word of God is encouraging yes, yes. to the saints. Amen. Yes. Whether it's corrective, whether it's instructive, yes. whatever it is, if we're right, if we're if our heart is set, Amen, to please the Lord. Uh -huh. Amen. The word of God is encouraging. Yes, amen. amen. It'll lift you up. Amen. It'll get you above the difficulties of life. Yes, It'll give you something to hold on to. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 The Bible says, starting in verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. I love it when the Bible talks about a certain village, yes. a certain man, right. a certain woman. Yeah. Amen. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Mm -hmm. 
She had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was covered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is me. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Very familiar passage of scripture tonight. No doubt a message that we all heard a dozen or more times, just who knows what, how many times. But tonight for our edification, I want to preach to you what the Lord gave me called devoted or distracted. On the thought tonight, Lord help us. God, as we come to the table and to eat what's set before us, God, we do ask you to grant us an appetite here, Lord. God, to receive, Lord, the word of God as it is in truth and righteousness. God, the way of life, Lord, help us. God, not to be just a, a hearer, but to be a doer tonight, Lord, to make the application. God, to examine ourselves, Lord, to help us to establish and to perfect this local church, this body. God, that we might do the work that you sent us to do. You can be seated. Amen. I thank the Lord tonight. That you know, we can read these stories time and time again. Yes. God can yes. speak to his people. Yes. And if you've ever read this story, if you've ever heard it preached, you know probably what I'm going to talk about. But I just could not get away That's from the good. thought today. Oh. When Sister Linda was up there over for lunch and we talked about, amen, getting back to the place, amen, where we can worship God, amen, right. where we can be in his presence, amen, yes. where we're comfortable, amen, when the Lord moves and where we can expect. God can do great things. I want you to know, amen, I got in this thing not realizing what I was getting into. But now I've come to a place, amen, in my walk with the Lord that I want more. I want to see the fullness of God. I want to see whatever God wants me to see. I want it to happen, and I want Him to use me if that's what He wants to do. I want Him to use this church. I want him to use my family. I want God to be glorified. I want him to come and do. I'm telling you, with church, there's things. Hey, Amen. As they said earlier today, if you can see over the top and you can hear what the saints of God up there are talking, hey, Amen. If you can just get an encouragement from on high, it would be church. We not even really scratch the surface. Hey, Amen. We're just getting started. Hey, Amen. But I can tell you, we better get on with it because time is about to wrap up. Hey, Amen. We're turning. I believe it's soon to take hold. Yeah. Amen. Jesus warned us in his Bible, John Luke chapter 21 and verse 34, and the cares of this life. Yeah. He warned us, amen, among other things, to not be distracted right. with the cares of of this life. You know, uh, it's not the overtly wicked, as one man said, but it's the tyranny of the urgent. Right. Amen. That oftentimes becomes the greatest test in a man's life. Amen. I want to look tonight just for a few minutes at Martha and Mary's experiences. And I know you've heard this before. And I know that God, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing new. But I want you to know this is what God gave for us here tonight. Amen. Our story takes place in a certain place. Amen. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. According to the gospel of John, Bethany was where Martha and Mary lived. John chapter 11 and verse 1, the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. We know that Bethany was located roughly two miles on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And I believe here tonight, like Old Testament Bethel, Bethany was representative of the church of God. Amen. The house of God. Amen. Amen. It's obvious we can read from our Bibles. It would take, uh, you know, we read the scriptures that Jesus uh, came to Bethany to visit regularly with these people, with his family. Amen. They had an understanding of who he was. There was no just passing relationship. They were friends. Amen. They knew each other. Amen. They had a relationship. 
And I can I tell you tonight that the experiences of both of these women, right. amen, are common among you and I. Right. There are two patterns of life here that we must consider and we must realize that we're living one or the other. Right. I said we've got to get a hold of it. Yes, sir. And then it's not enough to just know who Jesus is. Come on. It's not enough to have a passing relationship right. with him. It's not enough to have just a mental agreement and then with your mind that Jesus lived, that he was crucified, and that he rose again. You've got to have a personal relationship with Christ. Amen. Amen. As we learn, one is profitable. And the other is destructive, disastrous. One is foundational to our survival, and the other, amen, to remain in it, will seal our doom spiritually. Amen. Two different, yet very, two distinct, yet different, and strong characters are displayed, depicted here. Matthew 12, and verse 33, the Lord Jesus himself says, ye shall know a tree by his fruit. Amen. Can I tell you tonight, Amen. We've got to get to the place. We talked about it at lunch. Amen. We've got to get to the place where we're willing to call things what they are. Yeah. Amen. Not skirt around the issue. Oh. Amen. Come to a place where we're honest with one another. Right. Where we're honest with ourselves. Amen. Oh. Where there's lack, we take responsibility. Yeah. Where there's unbelief, we say, God, help me my unbelief. Oh. Where there's unfaithfulness, we say, God, it's me, Lord, help me to be faithful. Yeah. Where there's something we're wrong. Yeah. Amen. We're willing to say yes, Lord. I am the man. I am the one. God help me. You know, it's not enough. We can't, you know, I don't want to just make it all doom and gloom, but I want you to understand we can have an in victory. We can have a consistent and a victorious, productive, spiritual life. Amen. I talked about it, I think, a week or two ago, how that, you know, we give too much credit to the devil. Amen. We get too much uh, involved and, and worried about what he's trying to do and what he's doing and the way he's attacking. He ain't never going to stop. Right. Can I tell you tonight, the devil hates you. He hates me. He's a liar. And we understand that that's his operation. That's what he does. Right. Amen. Amen. I tell you, how many, how many people in your life that you know of that you can put your finger on or Look them up in your phone book and say they don't agree with me. They're against me. Oh God. They don't. They don't. They don't. They're not for me. But we don't sit and worry about what they're saying. Right. We don't care two cents whether or not they agree with us or whether they hate us. I mean, we pray for them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We need to. Amen. We need to lift them up. We need to believe God the best. But we're not sitting around intimidated by these folks. Amen. But somehow, we let that lying snake come in the house of God. We let them come into our hearts. We let them get in our vehicles. We let them get in our coat pockets. And we begin to listen to them. And I'm telling you tonight, we can have the victory. Amen. You shall know a tree. By his fruit. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't want to I don't want to be somebody that says and doesn't do. Right. Amen. I don't want to say I don't want to be somebody that comes into the house of God on Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and shouts Amen and Hallelujah and leaves out the door and leaves Jesus Christ bearing the altar in the foyer. Amen. I don't want to be somebody, Amen, who says I'm a Christian but doesn't live a Christian life. I don't want to be somebody, Amen, who's not if you want to look at the history on my search or on my uh, internet, and then there's all kind of manner of wickedness and evil and questionable content. I don't I don't want to be somebody. Oh. Amen. To behind closed doors, it's someone other. Amen. Oh. To the one that you see right now. That's right. Oh. Amen. I want to be what God's called me to be. Yes. What's that got to do with Mary and Martha? I don't know, but that was good. Good. Amen. Yeah. Let's consider for a moment Martha. The Bible says in verse thirty-eight of chapter ten that she received Jesus into her house. Yeah. Martha's not without her good points. Uh-huh. Everybody picks on Martha. Right. I tell you, Martha, if I were here, if I were to meet her or see her, maybe one day in heaven we'll get to meet her. Yeah. I'll tell her sister, hey man, I was rooting for you. Yeah. Hey man, I'm telling you, sometimes we get into the rut, hey amen, of people getting like Martha. Hey man, and we think, oh, look at that old Martha. Look what she's got herself dug into now. 
Amen. If she could only just see him here. Amen. And you know, almost get to the point where we wash our hands of Martha. Amen. Almost get to the point where we just had it up to our, head, our necks with Martha. Where we don't want to even worry about that. We aren't willing to pray for her. We're not willing to reach out to her. We're not willing to try to minister to her and encourage her. We're just done with Martha. Martha has some good stuff going for her. Amen. She received Jesus in her house. Yes, and I'll tell you, that's about that's more than most of the professing church world would do today. Jesus said, Matthew, I'm, I'm so convicted by this. He said, Matthew 25 and verse 40, when you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm telling you? That most folks today would rather give them a hotel room amen, than welcome them into their home. Yeah. Amen. They'd rather put them up in the guest house amen, than, to, than to sit down and feast for them. But I want you to know she didn't just welcome them into their home. The oh, Bible says... She made him supper. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. She served the Lord. Yeah. Amen. She came. Amen. She had, come on in, Lord. Amen. Not only did she say, come on in, but she got busy putting on a meal yeah. for him. Amen. She said, oh, yeah. i got to have something to give. Can I tell you tonight? Amen. It's not enough, amen, to come into the presence of God and realize that we've got something to give. Amen. We've got to have something to give. And we must. But it's not enough. Martha began to cook him some need. Yes, sir. Amen. Can I tell you, she was a giver. Martha wanted to serve. She had a servant's heart. She wanted to give. Amen. She took from whatever little probably she had. I don't know whether she was wealthy. Some people say she might have been. But whatever it was, it probably wasn't like you and I, Pantry. Amen. Tonight, but she knows she gave. She began to make something for the Lord to eat. Amen. Can I tell you, she was the first one, amen, to greet Jesus when he came to Bethany after Lazarus died. I'm telling you, she was right there. Amen, I said she was right there. She displayed faith in him and confessed that he was the Lord. Amen, what are you talking about? She said that in John 11 and 27, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, when she'd come into the world. She had an understanding. She was a giver. She welcomed him into her home. And she had a realization and then a revelation that this was not just some man. This was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And she came into the world. Amen. She was courageous. I said she was courageous. What are you talking about? It was dangerous at that time to be associated with Jesus. I said it was dangerous, especially in Jerusalem or near Jerusalem. Amen. And so Martha... It's like most believers today. What are you saying? I'm saying they're busy serving their master. And they're not concerned necessarily about the danger. They're not so much concerned, amen, about the image. But there's something missing. Church, can I tell you, we can get into a place, amen, we can come into the house of the Lord week in and week out. Uh Amen. We can get into a religious rut. Where we do the same things. We come in, we clap our hands, we say amen, we say a prayer, we listen to the preaching, we sit, we come to the altars, and Lord knows we ain't been playing games in the altars lately. I'm telling you, God's been moving, and I know the Lord's working, but church, I want to encourage you tonight. Don't let go. Don't pull, don't give up. Amen. Don't let off at all. You keep your foot on the gas. You keep going further. You keep getting farther in Christ. You keep digging in. And trust in God. Because one day. Yeah. Amen. Hey, it's going to be worth it all. Yeah. How many yeah. What about Mary? The Bible says she sat at his feet and heard his word. She's the model of spiritual order. You say, what are you talking about? Amen. Simple, innocent. She sat, humbled herself. At the foot of the Lord. Amen. At his feet. The Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We know beyond any shadow of a doubt her love tonight and her devotion for Christ is above question. Amen. Nothing took precedent over her nurturing her relationship with him. Amen. It's not that she didn't care about the guests. 
It's not that she wasn't concerned about whether or not Christ would be fed or not. It wasn't important to her necessarily. Amen. That, that uh, all the things that Martha was worried about, what she knew though, was the one thing needful. The thing that she had to get something from was to sit there and to be humble before Christ and to hear His Word. Hallelujah. You know, can I say this? What happens in a local church, in a family, in a nation, in a community, whatever, however far you want to go with it, is the preacher preaches. Amen. The church hears. Amen. And But they don't really hear. They don't really hear. They take fault. They receive the accusation. Amen. The word of God is, the Bible says that the word of God, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for instruction, for correction, for reproof. Yeah. Can I, you know, people say, well, I don't like the way the preacher's preaching down to me. Hey, Amen. The preacher is hopefully preaching what God gave him to preach. Hey, amen. And if you were, if, if, if you and I, amen, were to right here sitting in this church tonight and God himself unzipped eternity and stepped out into this congregation, amen, he would be talking down to you and I. Not in a negative way, amen, but that's just the reality of it. God wants to do something in our life. Amen. Sometimes, amen, the word of God, it humbles, it comes underneath, it cuts out, it exposes, and it lays bare. But what people have, what happens is people, they don't hear. Oh, that God, that we would have an ear to hear. Sometimes, you know, I can remember early on in my walk with, you know, trying to serve the Lord. I struggled. We talked about it earlier. Sanctification. Growing in grace. God doing the work in our lives. Amen. Maturing. Coming to fullness. You know, an adult. No longer needing milk. Desiring and seeking and, and longing for meat. Amen. And throughout that, can I tell you something? Come on, brother. Wherever you're at right now, if you hope to go any further, there's going to be correction. There's going to be instruction. There's going to be something that you didn't want to hear about you. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. There's going to be something pointed out. Yeah. And whether it's by the preaching, whether it's by private counsel, whether it's by the Holy Ghost, amen, that there's something in you and in me that God is seeking to get rid of. That yes, yes. he might conform us to the image of Christ. Oh, Can I tell you tonight that Jesus, amen, when we stand before God, what's he going to see in your life? Come on, brother. Come on. Is he going to see Christ? Oh, God, help Paul said, it's not me that liveth. But Christ that liveth in me. Yes. And the life which I now live, I live by faith. Yes. In the Son of God who loved me, Amen. gave himself for me tonight, church. Amen. Amen. What will cry? What will God see? Come on. She was humbled. Amen. She demonstrated yeah. a hunger right. for the word. Glory. And if there's anything that I hope to try to accomplish tonight by the Holy Ghost, yes, yes. it's to try to bring into clear focus yes, the need that you and I have to hunger yes, sir. for the pure yes. word of God. Yes. To hunger, to have an appetite, even for the things that God wants us to hunger for. 
to have an appetite for the word, whatever. Look and listen to me. You know, I can remember the brother different ones talking to me, and, and I, I actually was so crazy. I'm telling you, I actually went and knocked on my old pastor's door, and I said, hey, brother, can I talk to you? And he said, yeah, come on in. Well, we went to the front porch, and we sat out there, sister, and I said, brother, hey, man, is there anything in my life that you see that you don't think is very godly or that you can see to be a stumbling block in my life or destructive? Anything in my wife's life? Anything in my children's life? Is there something that you see? Oh, yeah. Come on, brother. Oh, yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, brother, there is. Well, to my shock, how many of you know tonight there's things in your life that God's trying to deal with? I said, how many of you know right now tonight that God is trying to put his finger on something? And it's going to get you out of the way. And it's going to put you and Christ in you further and more deeply and more uh, effectually. I remember him telling me that. And I sat down. And at the end of the conversation, I was so thankful it was my wife and not me. I'm just kidding. (laughs) But can I tell you, somebody can do you good. Yeah. Hey, mama. Yes. Hey, daddy. Yeah. Hey, brother. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. Preach it to us, brother Doug. Help us. Is there something you know I don't see? You ever been in an old car at the little bitty side view mirrors? At the blind spots? Yeah. Yeah. They used to sell the little round dome looking things you stick on there. That's right. Hey, Amen. Some of us need blind spots. Yes, we do. Yes, sir. I say all of us. Forget about somebody. We do. Yeah. Amen. I need somebody to look into my life. I need somebody to look into my family's life. I need somebody outside that's objective. It's not me or her or him. Amen. That's willing to step in. Amen. And say, hey, brother, I heard you say something the other day. Hey, sister. Amen. Where was you the other day? Hey, friend. Hey, family. Hey, what's going on? I believe God's trying to do something. I did it shortly after that to my boss. I called him aside. I said, hey, bro, hey, boss. He was a good friend by then. And I thought, well, this is going to be easy. There's nothing he ain't happy with. I, I get races regular. I get all the new tools. I get the best jobs. Brand new trucks. You're helping us, Brother Doug. Come on. You know what he did? He said, well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> let me talk to you. That's good. Amen. Did I want to hear that? No. Not really. But you know what it did for me? It exposed. I can see it. You know what? I yeah. thought I was doing great in this right. area. Right. I thought I had the victory over this, but I apparently didn't. God helped me. Yes. Lord made me an employee, yes. God, that can glorify you. Can I tell you, yes. when you're on the job, the way you do your paperwork, the way you structure your work center, the way you talk to customers, and the way you handle yourself and carry yourself can all be a reproach or a glory to God. Yes. Amen. When you call yourself a Christian, and when you turn in sloppy paperwork that they couldn't read, that's what my problem was. He used to fight and rave and try to decipher, decipher whatever I was writing. But he was so afraid to hurt my feelings. Oh, he wouldn't God. tell me. Help us, Lord. Can I tell you, you can write out your paperwork yes, for sir. the glory of yes, God. Sir. Come on. I said, you can turn in your own time. Yes, sir. I said, you can do something. I'm oh, listening to the church. Yes. Hey, we're going to get a hold of something. If I believe God, we're right there. I've talked to Brother Charlie about it so much. I believe we're right here. Yeah. Amen. We're just at the precipice and we've got something. Amen. That God wants to do. He wants yeah. to pour yeah. out into us. He wants to accomplish through us. He wants to use us in. Yeah. Amen. But we're going to have to get a hunger for the Word of God. Yeah. We're going to have to quit quilting under the correction of the Word of God. We're going to have to let the pressure put us into the altar and spit it out the door. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. So many have just adopted this defeatist and victim mentality. 
They say, I can never make it. I'll never make it. I'll never make it. And so they give up. That's not the red. That's not the solution. The answer is to say, oh God, please help me. I don't want to give up. I want to make it. I want to glorify you. You know, God's not going to put anything on you that we can't handle. Right. And, and nobody here wants to get drunk on whiskey. Nobody here has a desire to, you know, be a chimney. Nobody here has a desire to sell illicit drugs and look at pornography. Hey, but can I tell you, until we get a full-blown, sold-out commitment to what God wants. Hey, but we're sitting right here. I talked to Brother Allen about it this afternoon. He said he'll leave the 99 and he'll go after the one. Hey, and I don't know what he, I don't know what the deal is. I don't understand it all. But I know he's faithful. And I don't care if it's one or two or ten. God's not going to move until we get in one accord and get in one place and we get a hunger for the word of God. Amen. Mary had a hunger for the word of God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible says she heard his word. Yes. Come on now. Come on. I said she heard his word. Amen. Proverbs 8 and 34, this Bible says, Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, yes. waiting yeah. at the posts of my doors. Oh, thank you, Lord. That word heard, you know what it means? <laughs> Just what it says. Yes. There's no <laughs> ain't you glad? Those words almost always mean exactly what they say. Yes, sir. You don't have to guess that. Readiness to hear. Quick to surrender. And eager to obey. Yes, sir. That's what hearing the word of God will do for you. I said that's what they're hearing the word of God will do for you. And can I tell you something? It is absolutely and from a preacher's standpoint. And I'm not I know I'm not the pastor. But, I'm talking, but I believe God's called us here to serve and to help in whatever way we can. But from a preacher's standpoint, amen, it is not joyous. It brings absolutely no satisfaction whatsoever to get up and to preach the way that things that might hurt somebody's feelings or that might drive somebody into, a, uh, into isolation within themselves. It's not pleasant. It's not joyous. Amen. But can I tell you, amen, I'm unashamed tonight. Amen. To say to declare to you what I said to the Lord. Amen. The church has got to get back to an appetite for the word of God. Amen. For the word of God. I said we've let anything pass in our hearts. We've come to a place where I think I feel it seems like trumps. What does the Bible say? Hey, we get rid of that. Yes, sir. Begin to say, God, what does your word say? Amen. Amen. Mary had her priorities right. Yeah. Her labor was birthed out of relationship. Life. But what we have today is there's far less Marys than there are Marthas. What was the difference? Martha was covered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Look out. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Uh -huh. Amen. That's like saying, God, I tell you what. I know I'm facing 10 years for this car I stole. Yeah, but if you'll get me out of this, I'll live for you. Mm -hmm. no, you will. Oh, God, help us, Lord. No. I know, God, I spent all my rent money and my, and my life money and my bill money on uh, you know, gambling and, 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 and alcohol and stuff over the weekend. But if you'll get me out of this, God, I'll serve you. Oh, God. God. Do you not care yeah. that Mary, you know what she was doing? She was rebuking the Mary. Lord. Yeah. Do you not care, God? Lord, do you not see? Here I am. I dropped everything. I tied everything up. I put on something to eat. And here she won't even help me serve you. Are you going to let this happen? Are you going to let this go on? You see, that's what happens. We get in the house of God. We get in the presence. We get under the in the presence of the Lord, and God begins to move, and folks begin to get. Yes. Thank you. One says, 
Lord, do you see? I'm the only one at the prayer meeting. God, I'm the only one praying. God, I'm the only one cleaning the toilets. God, I'm the only one, it seems like. It's even trying around here. That's what Mary, that's what Martha did. Okay. Can I tell you? Mary had her priorities right. Right. I said Mary had her priorities right. Martha let the cares of her service distract her. But can I tell you tonight we can do that? We can get to place, church. Amen. With the necessities of daily life and the flow of our circumstances. Amen. Begin to dictate whether or not we got the victory, whether or not we got joy, whether or not we got love for one another. Hey, I don't want to ever come to the place, Sister Karen. Anyway, I come to the house of God. My, my love for this church is dependent upon what, whatever kind of performance level I think we ought to be performing at. Or whatever kind of love. I want to love these people. I want to love every one of you. I want to love Jesus. I want to love my pastor. I want to love my, I want to get I want to do whatever. I want to be what God's called to be. No matter what. You know, if you're the only one down here tearing in the altars, if you're the only one that really seems like, you know, and I, I want you to know, I don't believe that's happening. No, huh? But if you feel like Good preacher, that's you. Help us I said, if you feel like that's you, Help and you feel like somebody's not carrying their way, mm-hmm. amen. Pray for them. Yes, amen. Don't you get in the face of God right. and say, Lord, care us not. Come on, brother. But she left me to serve alone. God, I did this for you. Really? That's good preaching, brother. <laughs> really? Martha? <laughs> Who is she doing it for, Martha? Look out. <laughs> Martha? You know, that's what I believe he was trying to get her to see. Come on, brother. Martha, you're doing this for you. Yeah. But if you'd be like Mary, she chose yes, sir. the one thing needful. Yeah. Oh, God. Good preaching, brother. God help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, help me, Lord. Help us, Lord. I remember a prayer meeting some years ago. And there were men carnal and lost distracted whole sanctuary full of people praying there were several men just masquerading and I'm not coming down against them hard I I knew it was it could happen to anybody but they were Cumbered about, distracted, yeah. Yeah. serving, yeah. Look out. and they masked their distraction with religious busyness. Oh no! God's not looking for religious busyness. No. God wants a devotion. Yes. Hallelujah. He wants devotion, brother Nick. That's it. Fellowship. Amen. Listen, we're gonna get we're gonna get the cares. This there's things that we gotta do. Yeah. There's things that we gotta tend to. Yeah. Hey man, but while we're doing them, we can still draw out of him. Yeah. And if we have to do them all alone, Come on. guess what? We can still do them and yeah. still find the kind of way of grace to worship God. You know, uh, I was thinking about you know Kelly sometimes. Women, you know, y'all get together and piles of laundry everywhere. Doing, I mean, nobody likes washing socks under, you know. Do you know? Clean it up after me, so to speak. But she can do it. Amen. For Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. I can help her, her get it done. But, right. but even if I don't, Lord, don't you care? Come on, brother. Come on, church. Good preaching. 
God cares. He cares. We ought not ever bring into question whether or not He cares. I said we ought, we ought not ever bring it into question. But if we have to, hey, then we've got to hear what the Lord's trying to say tonight. Hey, Amen. Trust. Get in the place of yes. humble humility, submission yes. to God. Come if you have to come, it doesn't matter what you got to draw, draw aside or lay aside. I can tell you, I'm one. Yes. Amen. I might talk a good talk. Amen. But at the end of the day, I'd rather walk in the house. Amen. With dust bunnies here and a load of laundry there. Amen. But to see my wife pray through and to have that spiritual atmosphere. Amen. Flowing in the presence of God and the Holy Ghost and all my fragrance in my home. That. Amen. 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 I don't care what we got to lay aside. Sometimes we were talking earlier about work. I want you to know sometimes it's not the work, it's not the act, it's not the stuff, it's not our obligations. It's a lot of the extras. Right. Amen. But if we'll just get a hunger tonight. For God, we're in you said we're talking about. I love the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. But there's some that don't. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But can I tell you tonight, when you hear the word of God and it touches you, and that touch drives you out rather than in, you don't love the word of God. You just don't love it. That's right. Come on. It doesn't have to always be like that. And it won't always be like that. But if you'll let the Word of God touch your life and conform you to the image of Christ, yes. if you'll let Him dwell in you richly, amen, and let Him be the Lord of your life, yes. and you give an appetite, whatever you want, God, whatever you like, Lord. God. I just want to worship you. I want to fellowship with you. Oh, yes. You think about correcting your child. Can you imagine what would happen if every time we got on to our kids, they got up and ran out of the house and we never saw them again? Somehow children know that we love them. Somehow they understand most of the time that we're not their enemy. Right. But yet, when God tries to deal with his children, Amen. we rail against it. We accuse him. We accuse his people. We receive accusation. Let me tell you something tonight. We've got to get a love for the word of God. Yes. I'm not just talking about the Bible. I, although I am talking about the Bible. Yes. Amen. But this right here, amen. If anything I preach doesn't add up to this, amen. You just cast it off and you go yes. on with God. Right. You follow us as we follow Christ. Yes. Amen. But if it's in the Word of God and God's in it, you know, if it's something that you can't, uh, you know, find some fault with, amen, which you shouldn't be trying to do anyways, but if it's there, amen, you yes. got to side with it yes. and side yes. against yourself yes. and stop saying but and stop saying but. I'm telling you, every time we get in a conversation, you're like the different ones. It's all oh, yeah, but. Right. No, 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 no. You know what? I don't, but I'm telling you, everyone that does. He said, oh, be holy. He said, be ye perfect. He said, love one another. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without this no man just the Lord. He said it. He gave us the command. And by his grace, Can I tell you that I hope, I, I promise, by the grace of God, you can hold my feet to the fire. I want you to. Yeah. I'll never preach anything come on. that didn't come from the book. Right. I may use analogies and personal experiences. Right. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, when the prophet stood up and said, Hear me, uh, hearken. O ye Israel, to the voice of the words of the Lord thy God. Yes. Amen. They didn't even have a Bible. Right. But was that the word of God? Right. That yeah. was the word of God. Right. I said it was the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. You've got to get a hunger for it. Church, I want you to make it. 
I want to make it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I want you to know, and I believe God has called me here. Yes, How about you? Yeah. Is there anybody in this congregation right here tonight? Amen. And I'm not talking about the visitor sergeant. But if you if you're a regular here and you can say that God called you here, Amen. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. So you've all said, right here or not, before God and before one another, amen, that God called you here. Amen. So if God called you here, amen, when the way gets narrow, and when the way gets tight, amen, when that gate gets stuck, uncomfortable in the passage, and it seems impossible, amen, you can just look to the promise, amen, if God called you, he will equip you, and he will give you grace, amen, the way of underneath. Hallelujah. Why'd you do that, brother? Doug? I did that because I wanted you to know that this is a God thing. Yes. This is a God thing. Yes. It's not about any one of us. And I want you to know God loves individually, you know, we all have value. But corporately, if one can put a thousand and two can put ten thousand, what can thirty of us do? How are we here normally? Church, I know it's not always understandable. The principle is this. If you're not being asked to sin, come on, brother. Do it. Yes, sir. Do it. Glory. What's he going to cost you? Mary had a heart, I believe. Amen. She heard his word. What does that tell me? That tells me she was hungry. Yeah. Amen. She wanted to know what he was saying to her. He said, What are you talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. Showing up on the scene. Amen. And you make you availing yourself. Hey, can I tell you that when the Holy Ghost comes, hey man, when the Spirit of God begins to move in a church like ours, hey man, I, I can tell you that's the Lord coming. He wants you to avail yourself to Him. He wants you to come and just humble yourself and sit at His feet and hear what He has to say to you. You know, all of a sudden, I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I sat right here last night and I was just praying and talking and I was, you know, I, you know. Uh, after a while, it was just me all by myself. And I was sitting over there and I said, Lord, would you talk to me now? Come on, Brother Doug. Amen. God, would you talk to me? Yes. Oh, I just want to hear you. Yes, yes. Sir, brother. Amen. God, I need you. To speak to this heart. Oh, yes. God, I want to help you people. Glory. God, I want to be what you've called me to be. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do we have a hunger tonight for the Word of God? Amen. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Remember, you raised your hand. Right. Glory. That song says, when the way gets narrow, the way gets tight. One thing for sure, what do you think? Mind's made up. My mind's made up. Is your mind made up tonight? I'm going on for Jesus. I said, I'm going on for Jesus. There's nothing in this world that's worth losing out on Him. He's worthy of everything that it can cost me. He's worthy of anything that I can leave behind. Hey, listen to me, church. If we'll get in one accord and one mind, and I'm not talking about hey, then some sort of perfect consensus. I'm talking about spiritual unity here in the yes. house of God. Yes. If we can get in one accord and one mind, yes. we can have Pentecost. Amen. Mary came and sat at the feet of the Lord. Yes, sir. That word careful. I'm sorry, Martha. He said, Thou art careful and troubled about many things. It means to be anxious, to take thought, to be confused and disquieted of mind. Oh, Can I tell you tonight, service without a relationship produces frustration. Yes, yes sir. sir. You find yourself frustrated. You find yourself up against the wall. You find yourself in a, in a, in a rut for extended periods of time. Amen. Just humble yourself. Get at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, speak to me. God, I don't want to be frustrated. 
I don't want to be careful. I don't want to be troubled about all this stuff. God, I don't care if nobody steps up. I don't care if nobody else labors and tears in the altar. I don't care what anybody else. I want folks to get in. And I want God to be glorified in our midst. But God, I don't want to be hungry for you, God, and your word. I want to be in your presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't ever come to a place, church, where you believe your at your 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 distressed attitude is justified. Oh God, help that frustration, that distress, it's not it's not justified. Right. You know, one of the things that the Lord has dealt with me about since I've been saved is I was like a firecracker, brother Nick, instantly <laughs> quicker than a firecracker. I'm talking about a short fuse. Yeah. Short, short fuse. I still have to find myself time sometimes, not letting my frustration with whatever come out. Right. Amen. It's not justified. We can be dis- we can be disappointed with things. We cannot we can not approve of all the different things that we're having to face and go through in life. But we're supposed to keep the victory. Yes, sir. Amen. We're supposed to keep the victory. Amen. I said last night, I said, God, I want to lead by example. Oh, God, help us, Lord. If we'll all get that heart tonight, to do it, lead by example, to be the solution. That we see to the problem. What would take place around here? Think about it. Jesus said one thing's needful. Yeah. And Mary had chosen that part. She chose it. And it will not be, shall not be taken away from her. Right. Amen. The question regarding our priorities tonight is a pressing one. What can go undone? And what is absolutely essential? Come on now. Come on now. This is a hard one. You see, we, when we deprioritize the things of God, we say by default that whatever it is that we found more important than obeying Him and being in His presence is more worthy than Him. Is more important than Him. You say, what are you talking about? I'm saying I don't care whether it's work. I don't care whether it's a trip. I don't care whether it's something that we messed up throughout the week and didn't order our days good enough to get done throughout the on, on, on the well, during the week. And we wait until Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night to get it done. I'm telling you, we put value on that above Him. Yeah. Amen. I want you to know one thing needful. Amen. Is to see the value. Amen. And being in his presence. And this whole idea that we're two or three are gathered together in his name, that, that's not what God's talking about when he says, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, which is a matter of some. I'm talking about coming to a place where we, we regularly meet on Sunday and Wednesday, right? Right. Amen. When that's not a priority in your life. Think about it. Here at church. I told the men, I told them today that. I got three criteria for work when I when, when I came down here to look for a job. Not working on Sunday ever. That's good. I'm not ever working on Wednesday night, and I'm not traveling. Come on. Uh, not doing it. Why? Why? Because I've been called Amen. to be in the house of God Come on. with you. That's it. With you. That's it. With you. Yeah. With you. Yeah. Called to be in the house of God together. Amen. And what we put over that, we place over Him. Hallelujah. You say that sounds legalistic. No, brother. No. First of all, find me a one verse of scripture in the Bible that says legalism is a sin. Oh, God help. You know what legalism is? It's believing 
that <laughs> someone who believes that they can live according to the Bible is wrong. Mm -hmm. Come on. Jesus never said, don't worry about it. If it bothers you to ruffle someone's feathers. Come on, brother. No. He said, be ye holy. Yes, sir. For your Father in heaven. Come on. Be ye perfect. You know what that means? That doesn't mean, we know, I know, I, I mean, I am overweight. My, my body's broke down. I've got tattoos all over me. i got a, a litany of things wrong with me. I know I'm not perfect. But I can be morally blameless. Yes, God, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. I can walk up right. Yeah. Yeah. By the grace of God, I can live holy. Yeah. No buts. No buts. Amen. Just amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Yeah. I said Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood. Yeah. Not to deliver us from just the, pe the penalty of sin. Come but he came on. to deliver us from the power yeah. and the bondage of sin. He said in John chapter 8 verse 11. He said it in John chapter 5 and verse 14 too. That's the worst thing come upon me. Oh, what a wicked God he'd be. You've heard me say it before. Listen, church, we can be holy. We can be Christians. He said, why are you talking about this tonight? Just since I've been here, I want to be careful. Yep, my brother. You get people that enter into your life. Right. And there's a camaraderie, there's a connection. Right. You think, oh God, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, we came from a very different place than this. But I've seen people give up in these last days yeah. over nothing. Right. I'm talking about give up. Right. Give up. Yes. Walk away from God. Yeah. Yeah. I believe if this had continued in John Luke chapter 10 very much longer, <clears throat> Martha would have got so disgusted with Mary and the fact that Jesus wasn't stopping her. Oh, think about it. She had just walked out. What are you trying to say? But I'm trying to say, we've got to have a love for the Word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We've got to quit accusing God. Right, God. We've got to love one another. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's okay if you see somebody needing to get into the presence of God a little more than you do. I mean, it's okay. I mean, if you see somebody tarrying longer than you feel, let, don't worry about them. It's not about them. It's about you. And it's about him. And it's about what you're about. Yeah. Why are we in this for? Uh, I, I wish I could communicate better the heart, the, the, the thing that God put on my heart tonight. Mary had chosen that good part. Yes, sir. They were both products of their own choices. Mary's example of love and devotion and prayer and communion. Amen. It tells us that ministry to God takes precedence over ministry to others. Yeah. Oh, I said ministry to yes, God yes, takes yes, precedence yes, over yes, ministry yes, to yes, others. Yes, if we can't minister unto God, if all we can do is come to Him and say, God, why are you letting this happen in my life? God, why aren't you taking care of this? God, why aren't you intervening in this situation? And we can't minister unto Him. Amen. It'd be good if somebody, you know, spiritually get together and kick the Lord a bill. Amen. But you don't need no help. Amen. Right. God puts it on your heart to serve Him in that yeah. way. You serve Him yeah. in that way. You give Him your time. You give Him your service. But yeah. don't you look for somebody else to come along and take up the heart. And when they don't, you get offended with God. Amen. Oh, Amen. The Lord says, Martha, Martha. Come on. And get mad. He said, I want people to understand that Brother Doug loves them. And Brother Charlie, I know, loves them probably way more than I do. But 
Jesus. Yes, sir. There's nobody who loves him as much as he does. Right. Glory, glory, glory. And he wants us to come. Yes. He wants us to set at his feet. Yes, he does. Amen. Such a life won't fade. It won't fail. It won't pass away. It won't wilt under pressure. It'll stand forever. John, 1 John 2 and 17. It says, And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God yes. abideth forever. Yes. Amen. The difference between Mary and Martha was not one of personality or circumstance, but it was calling. Or priorities, rather. Sorry. They had different priorities. Mary had chosen the good part. Right. In the Old Testament, not closing, if you want to come put on, get on the piano. One of the indicators of a true conversion that God had really got hold of a nation or a man was that they had ripped down the altars and destroyed the, the groves or whatever and, and built right. new altars to God. Amen. <laughs> We will never fulfill the will of God. And you say, well, why has it always got to be we will never do this? If we forsake the altar. Yeah. Can I tell you tonight the key, <coughs> the one thing needful, is the altar. This week, I felt impressed by the Lord about my lack. <coughs> Consecration to the altar. You find time for everything else. But we have no time for him. We say, Lord, I've been cutting the grass. I've been trimming the hedges. Back here in the car. I don't have time to get down here. Nobody else will help me. Lord, I'm carrying the load all alone at home. There's nobody to help me. They treat me terrible on the job, Lord. They know I'm a Christian and so they put more on me than spare and they don't help me, don't give me no help. I don't have time to stop and seek you. Mary and Martha both lived in Bethany. In the same house. They had the same difficulties most likely. The same challenges. And Mary realized that her help was at the foot of the Lord. Can I tell you tonight, church? We get in too big a hurry these days. Do I can't just tear it, I can't linger here. Lord, I live so far away. I gotta get home at a reasonable hour. I can't. Not tonight. Lord, I'll just pray when I get home. I'll just pray when I get off work. Guess what happens? Cares in this life, they creep in. Hobbies, whatever it is, I don't know. There's nothing sinful necessarily. Life, life gets in the way, and we come to a place, and we say, "Oh Lord, don't you care?" 
And all along, there was an altar. Right here. Right here. All along, there was the solution, brother. All along, we had access to help.